Welcome to another Warlord Workbench. Uh, my name's Rich C, and today we're looking at the M7 Priest, the workhorse of the mobile artillery. And inside the box, let's start rummaging. So we've got number one, our smoke markers. A lovely little piece of kit to uh, annoy your enemy. We've got a new decal sheet, which is generic for the Americans. And we've got the new play cards, which have all your details for the priest itself, explaining where it was and where it fought, and also all the stats for it during the game. So it's a quite handy reference card. On the other side, of course, when you're organizing your armies, you can see that here it clearly denotes when it was used, by who, and its points cost in the game. What else have we got? Well, the tank itself. Let's open it up. So, one wrap bag with all the metal, two tracks, and the hull itself. So, fine detail resin. Lots of extra details, including all the internal floor work. You can see there. The ready shells. Tarping at the back for bad weather and all the equipment that the crew would have carried. Tracks themselves have nice clean crisp detail and on the bottom you can see these feeders we'll talk about in another video about how to remove those but they are marked clearly so you know which side they belong to. Metal parts just a few extras but predominantly you want to pay attention to the crew. All in ready action poses And operating the weaponry. Of course we have the ring mount for the 50 cal and the 50 cal itself and apart from all the other little parts that go on the most important piece the gun itself the 105. Now to actually get working on the model so the resin itself Always use a mask if you're going to be doing any filing and creating fine fibres or uh, dust in the air. Um, and often there's big feed points like these. Uh, I've just started filing one. If we use clippers, be sure not to grab it in one go because you might well cut off some of the extra area. Maybe just nibble a little bit at a time. And when you get it down to a, a level, swap for a file and just use a file to take off the extra edge. We're also going to look for areas of flash which can appear in these in between the wheels and around the track links. Just use a file and just work your way through giving a bit of a buff and a clean. The gun itself and the metal parts are often you'll often find these little flashy bits. Now you might be able to just break those off and you again you can use your file just to run around the edges keeping some of the gun points, get rid of any mould lines and again around the barrel and areas be careful not to file too much just a light pressure and let the file do the work. Now the model's cleaned we've been going around and starting to add some of the details. We've already added on some of the mounting brackets we've got one side glued on. Now we always test fit and make sure it is all sitting nicely but sometimes resin shrinks slightly and the tracks may be a slightly different size to the actual bodywork. If need be we can just make a little cut and trim to size at one end or the other. Again be careful not to trim that small lump off because it's part of the actual tank. All right, we'll just apply a little bit of glue down the inside and then we'll just slide that in it's clearly marked which side goes where you can see this small bit sitting in there at the back all right we'll just press it into place if it's a bit too bent then there is a way of straightening it up a bit of hot water right now I'm just going to use a little bit of this special magic spray which helps seal the glue it sets it faster means I won't have to stand here holding it. So just holding it in place and a little bit of a spray. So we built the tank, now it's moving on to the gun. 
The gun comes with uh, three extra finely detailed parts. So we can see that we've added in the adjusting wheels, the gun laying sights, and now we just need to fix that in to the tank itself. A little bit of glue, dropping it down into its housing. It's fine. Okay. So we want it obviously firing in its artillery mode. So we're going to sit it into its brackets and make sure it's pointing where we want it. Just a quick puff. That will help the glue set. We're now going to look at painting the M7 Priest. Uh, we've gone and sprayed it with the Army Painter Army Green, and now we're going to do some detailing with the matte black. Swap brushes, we're going to move on to doing a bit of dry brushing. Uh, so we just get our tissue ready and we're using gun metal. To do some dry brushing on the tracks, just to bring those back into detail. We'll then move on to doing some of the lighter shades on the hull and any other details that we can find, including brass on the shells inside the ready racks. So we're moving on to decals. The water slide decals just need to be cut out from the transfer sheet and left in water for a couple of minutes. Now that we've taken it out of the water, we'll use a wet brush just to ease and tease the decal from its backing paper into position on the tank. Don't force it, take your time and just be gentle with the brush. Now as long as the brush has got water in it, we'll be able to move the decal around a little bit longer until it's in the final position. Once we're happy, we're going to get some tissue and we're going to use the tissue to dab at the decal nice and gently just to soak away the water. Don't rub, just press gently and let the water soak into the tissue and we're done. With the decals done, we can move on to inking and we're going to use two colours here. We've got soft tone and strong tone. As we go on to the gun here, Gives a bit of a brown tinge to it. Sometimes if you're going over a freshly sprayed model on any large flat surfaces the ink will tend to puddle and you can use a little bit of washing up detergent just to help it spread to get some nice weathered results all around the tank. Nice and dirty looking, plenty of oil, streaks and wear and tear but possibly a bit too much in places. So we're going to use our army green and just using a large brush we're going to make sure that we cover it with a, a nice sort of even tone all over just very lightly on the top so it's a bit of a kind of a wet brush dry brush effect so we just brush too much excess off on the paper and then just avoiding the star of course just here and there just taking some of that weathering down a notch and lightening up the edges, so particularly on any surfaces that would see a lot of sun, top surfaces only, it's what we're after really. So those top of the fenders, mud guards. Okay, now to make it a little bit lighter, we're going to bring in a little bit of extra colour. We'll use skeleton bone, mixed in with the original army green. Just using the same brush, just a little lighter. We're looking for a nice light difference. And again, just on the top edges, this time just using the edge of the brush against the edges, just lightening up those top panels. And if it's too subtle and you want a sharper difference, then we'll just add a little bit more bone. I like to do it in gradual steps so if it's not enough, that's better than having way too much in one go. Keep your brush strokes going in the same direction and any difference in shades will look like weathering from the rain. But you can see now we've toned down some of that ink weathering. Once you're happy with the general effect all round, 
we'll move on to some dirtying. So we've finished highlighting and making sure that we're happy with all the details. Now we're going to obscure some of the details with the Battlefield mud. So for this we're going to use oak brown and a little bit of static grass. All I've done is taken a pinch of the static grass in here onto my palette, add a bit of mud brown and using an old brush that you don't mind getting wrecked, in this case a large dry brush, we're just going to mix in the static grass into the oak brown. Now of course you can research your battlefields and find out what colours the mud was and find a suitable alternative colour if you want just keep mixing until you're happy. Sprinkle in a bit more, mix it in and we're just trying to lift a lump of this texture and find a suitable place to pot it. So obviously the tracks, well let's start with the front end of the tracks, a bit of mud around the front, a bit of gloopiness there. Get some of that static grass, now of course where it all kicks up is going to be around the back end of the tank isn't it? So let's get some of that grass in, sprinkling it around, moving it around. If you're not too happy with the result, don't worry. Stuck up underneath the mud guards there. And you can always grab a bit, sprinkle a little bit on at a time. So as we come to the end of painting up the mud, we're just going to go around using a bit of water on the brush just to get rid of any excess that you're not too happy with. Of course that will have the effect of turning it into more of an ink which allows it to run down into all the recesses and just emphasises the detail a little bit more. Just whip round the tank, having a look at any areas which you think have been overdone, uh, using that water just to blend it all into the original colours. So we'll leave that to dry and we'll come back and finish it off with any last little bits of touching up and details. Otherwise, we're about onto the battlefield, ready to have a game, and we can add the crew later. <laughs> 